Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about something called arrays, which are very exciting um, because they let you store multiple val well, many type, many data within one kind of variable. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. Okay, so let's say um, you had something like a shopping list, and you had maybe ten items on it, and you wanted to set, um, you wanted to kind of uh, estimate how much money it's going to cost to buy those items. Um, so one way to do it is to say int price one. Uh, you know, price 2, price 3, price 4, all the way up to 10. And then you could kind of manipulate that data in the way that you want. Um, when you're outputting it, it'd kind of be a pain because you'd have to do C out price 1 and L, C out price 2 and L, and do all of that. So doing it like this is a pain, and um, it can really be frustrating. And there's a much better way to handle it, and that's uh, that's going to be using arrays. So instead of making all of these variables, let's like let's make this integer price, and then uh, open square bracket, and then in this uh, between these two square brackets, you put the number of elements that you want in your array. So say our shopping list is ten um, ten items. I'm going to put a 10 here. So now, the way that uh, the way that we use these variables is well, uh, by declaring it like this, we've really made 10 integers, even though it looks like we've only made one, because we've made this price kind of container, which contains 10 integers. So, um, the way that we manipulate these values is uh, say we wanted to output um, one of the prices. We use, um, we type price, the variable, and then open and close square brackets, and then in here we put the index of, um, of, uh, what, of the variable that we'd like to use. So let's go ahead and just put three. So this will output um, that index in price. Now something that's very important that I need to mention right now, because it's really important, is that when these indexes start at zero, so the first element in price is price zero. Not price one, it's price zero. Price one is the second element. So that's very important and something that you should really commit to memory. So outputting price three is actually outputting the fourth index in this array. So um, to set the values of this array to something, we could type price zero equals five. Oops, I meant price zero equals five. Price one equals uh, three, and have it like that. Um, but instead of typing this out all um, you know, having to type out each element, there is a better way, which is when you initialize the array, you can set it equal to um, two curly brackets, and then in here you put the values for your array separated by commas. So you can do 5, 3, 13, 2, 1, 1, 2, 4, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9, 10. Um, so now we've initialized all of the values in this array, and the first element's 5, the second element is 3, uh, the third element is uh, 13. So now we have uh, kind of these, this collection of data, um, all kind of stored in one easy-to-access container. So let's say that the first thing we want to do is we just want to output um, all the prices. We want to say price for item 1, and then the price in dollars. So, like I said before, we could go see out price for item 1, 
price zero. And then uh, we can kind of copy this, paste it here, say price for item two, change this to a one, uh, and then do that for all ten. But um, that starts to get very, very tedious if we have um, maybe a bigger shopping list. Maybe we have 25 items. Maybe we have 100 items. Maybe we have 2,000 items. Um, this can get very, very old, and it can be very frustrating to try to do it that way. So let's use what we just learned in the last video, which is a for loop, to output this entire array without having to type very much. So let's start off our for loop. Now, if you remember from the last video, the first uh, area, or the first parameter of the for loop is the initialization. So let's make an integer, and let's just call it i, because it doesn't really represent anything. All it's going to represent is the number of iterations through the for loop. Um, an iteration is every time it goes, it runs that block. So it's going to start out at zero, because it hasn't uh, run, that, run the for loop block any times. It's going to exit when i is less than 10 because it's going to start at 0 and go up to 10. The same way that the array indexes start at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, this will be 9, so i is less than 10, because 9 will be less than 10. Um, by 9, I mean that this is, uh, you know, price 9, like that, even though the value is 10. That's kind of confusing. Let's make this 4. Um, and then, for our iteration action, we can type i++, plus plus, or plus plus i, or how I prefer, i plus equals 1. Then let's start our block, and let's go ahead and see out price for item. And now here, uh, we put i, but really we want, um, we're going to want i plus 1, because this is set up to access the array uh, using the iteration value. So the first iteration it's going to access element 0. But we want it to say price for item 1, because for most things in the world, uh, you start at counting at 1. You know, computers don't really work that way. So price for item 1, space, let's do a dollar sign, and then let's go ahead and put the price. So we use price, open square brackets, and then we put i, which stands for how many times it's iterated, uh, through the block, and then our end square brackets. So this is going to go through this loop. It's going to go 10 times, starting at 0 up to 9, including 9, uh, going by 1 each time. It's going to say price for item i plus 1, and then it's going to output the price as according to our array that we created. Set our return value, say this out, array.cpp, and let's give it a try. Uh, oops, got the CD desktop. Okay, there we go, no errors. And let's go ahead and execute. Price for item one, five dollars. Price for item two, three dollars. Price for item three, thirteen dollars. So this is really cool. Instead of having to type out C out price one, C out price two, C out price three, we've we have this elegant solution of using an, an array, a kind of container, uh, or a way to access many different variables under the same name, and we've used a for loop so that we don't have to type out um, all those C outs, and it's very easy to access the data accurately. So um, the next step with this is let's say that we wanted to uh, maybe take the sum of an array and find out how many items are in this array, or not how many items, but what is the total of all of the indexes in this array. So this can be done with another for loop. 